Thanks, Sandy. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Mika Pipe. I'm the CEO of Outpage. They're a B2B gifting platform for marketers who want to be this gifting as a marketing channel and create, deliver, and measure a gifting campaign. So uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today is why add gifting campaigns to your ABX mix, uh, when to use ABX gifting, what makes for a successful ABX gifting campaign, and uh, also a recipe for putting together such campaigns should you want to try to bat out. So why should you add ABX gifting into your campaigns? But should you add kissing into your ABX campaigns? So first of all, it's very helpful with brand awareness, right? It's really getting in front of people, rising above the noise and setting something out that's physical and gets their attention. Um, gifts could be physical, they could be virtual, uh, but a lot of the times it's obviously more unique than what we're used to with just, you know, get another email. Um, staying more memorable at top of mind. Boosting engagement, which is most important. And... Uh, and you know, just being special and adding something, something a little extra to what you could do with the tag. A few stats, uh, we know that gifting works on the B2B side, but just from the customer's point of view, uh, 72% of uh, younger customers, Gen Z, say that they look forward to discovering mail with excitement. 38% of the survey visited a website after receiving relevant direct mail. And 71% of DevHacks survey respondents said that direct mail is more personal than they call communication. So really just getting out there and getting in front of people. Uh, going back to what Andy shared with us about ABX, uh, ABX is really about, uh, you know, some of the advice, not some of the advice, wow, a great be new to this. But really, instead of that regular funnel of spring and praying, and hoping that people that we send tens of thousands of emails to at the end of the funnel, some of them will convert. It's about flipping that funnel on its head and understanding that we now know not only who, uh, you know, what accounts we're trying to target, but who those decision makers are. And it's really about building relationships within those accounts, landing and expanding them. Uh, and, and that's really what the ABX funnel looks like. So. Targeting accounts instead of spraying and praying to tens of thousands, maybe we're targeting those, you know, 1,000 accounts that are most relevant to us. We know what the decision makers are. And then we also know, uh, you know, we need to build relationships and expand more within those accounts instead of it, uh, doing vast blast efforts. So we can use good thing for everything. I think that there is uh, sort of a thought process today of like, hey, gifting is expensive, right? So... We're not going to use it for everyone, but we're in the, we're in the world of B2B. But EMD said the ACB is high. Uh, then our opportunities are worth for us tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. A 50 or $75 guest might go a long way to b somebody instead of spending that on, you know, hundreds of people do who may not as cage. Uh, so it really depends where we are along the funnel, but where we see gifting and we work with uh, mainly B2B enterprise customers uh, like uh, Zendesk and DoorDash and Outbrain and others that might in several other ways. It's really along the whole file. And I'll show you a few examples of what that could look like. Um, but something that I think that we do want to touch upon also at ABM, just as like an introduction to ABM. I can't be marketing. It's really about building relationships. And we do want to bring sales and marketing closer together, but we do have sales and we have marketing, right? So where sales come into play, you guys want to uh, really go after that one person that you're targeting in the account, right? So there's something in ABM called one-to-one. -one, and that's about, hey, I spoke with somebody. How, to, how do I, you know, get his attention to do that next step? And I know that he's, you know, a Dallas uh, Cowboys fan. So maybe I'll send in something like that and get in front of him. But there's also uh, that step before and that step after in the marketing world where we want to increase them along the whole funnel and we're trying to target hundreds if not thousands of people at a time. So that's the one to few and one to Becky. 
And those are the examples that I've voting to have really focus on. Um, so a couple of examples of what that could look like. When we think of gifts, I think that we think a lot of the times about swag, but really now we have an opportunity in real estate to get fraud and our customers with something that stands out, right? So in this example, this is a demand generation campaign. So it is closer to that sales touch point. Right is a project management platform. They were targeting uh, potential customers and their message was four times the productivity is pretty sweet. So what they did is they sent out a postcard that said for him, the productivity is pretty sweet. And in order to unlock your candy and productivity, which came with, uh, they got a locked box of candy. Every person bought a different lock cupboard. They needed to go online and ask to chat or learn more. Uh, and in this case, they got a 40% engagement rate. Um, and I don't know if Amy spoke about it, so I'll, I'll go back to it, but it will. The digital world and what we're used to from radio and marketing tables is super noisy today, right? So whoever is in that marketing world is probably familiar with maybe two and a half uh, enga percent engagement rates from email. 40% is mind-blowing for somebody like Break because it means that you know, almost half the people that bought something actually went in and did something. And what's cool about this is that it's an experience that stayed with them. It got in front of them with the message, uh, literally using Gifty as a content piece. And here's another example. This is someone in some other place along the file. So uh, Zendis is a customer support platform. What they did is they actually targeted current customers of theirs. And what they wanted to do was expand them out of sound. So you might have been familiar with the customer support and work. This was a first customer then best. But at the time, they rolled out a home and speed out of products. So they rolled out guide, talk, cat, health, and they wanted to get in front of a lot of people. And to the point of where it is along, oh, they didn't want to spend so much money on the thousand people that they sent it to. Right? So they did a very low cost first touch point gift. They made this an experiential jury. Uh, they sent you coaster shaped targets with the different products and examples of the, those products on them. They had, uh, they had like, um, could you add them with the, uh, like, uh, on a, like a uh, goal, like an E, like a guitar pit with an explanation about the different uh, products of the back. So really using that gift has real estate to explain what they do, but it came with a postcard that explained to you, uh, you know, hey, not dad, hey, and hey, all, in order to hit your customers afford targets with Zendesk and receive a drill for us, please go to this landing page. So it was really sort of like a Karen and a hug, but it didn't feel like a fright because it was just a cute little, you know, gift. But it also was something that was uh, experiential, right? So gifts don't have to be yet another t-shirt or a mug, thing like all the whatever you find on uh, every other swag store. When he went into the landing page, this is what I really like about this example. It is... They did push you to do something to get the gift. They pushed you to qualify yourself. So you went into the landing page to continue that same branded message, to continue the same experience. And in order to get the drone, you've been either asked to chat, which was uh, enacted to your account manager's Calendly. So a very simple option for you to talk to somebody in Zendesk and learn work, or you could download a white paper and learn more. In both cases, you would have received a Zendis branded drug. What Zendis got from this very uh, one to low tech funnel was full funnel visibility. So not only shipping and tracking in one place, uh, which at one point they actually had to copy paste tracking numbers into FedEx or USPS or, you know, to see if somebody got it and ask their uh, sales team to follow up and say, hey, you bought the gift, hit me interest you in uh, you know, in uh, top guide and tat. Uh, so you got to choose your own journey, which was way more uh, pleasant for you as a recipient. And then this saw it, everybody got it. Everybody who went into the landing page on a personal basis. Everybody who took a call to action. 
and everybody can call by themselves. So if you chose to speak with your account manager, you went into a sales file, you went into sales course. If you chose to download a white paper, now they could follow up to put you into a nurture campaign. Uh, and gifting is even smarter today. What I'll, I'll fast forward a few, uh, a few times after this campaign, now it could be integrated into their marketing automation platform. So they don't even need to send that follow up email of learning more. They just have a rule that says, Hey, if somebody asked to learn more, send them this. And then after three days, send them more information until they're ready to actually speak with us. In this case, almost 50% of the people who got that also took it as an easy action. So during these times, or I'll say past few years, uh, we're used to the fact that people are sometimes working from home. We have a lot of global customers. We're not totally sure where they're at. In some cases, we will see bully digital campaigns. And we can talk about when that happens, but how do you actually do that? So uh, in the case that you do have a digital campaign, there are other ways to make that more experiential. It's not just about sending somebody, you know, a $50 Amazon gift card. There are a lot of virtual experiences. And also uh, we've found a solution to allow recipients to choose their country. Uh, and based on their country, give them the relevant gift cards based on the company that wants to send it, their budget, their criteria. Maybe there is a certain uh, lunch and learn. So have coffee on us and then you can choose the relevant coffee herbal variable world that makes sense. Uh, so there are ways to incorporate experiences also virtually in the case that that's needed. What do I mean when I say different gifting workflows? So I did show you a couple of examples right now. But gifting could be, uh, you know, it's not just a send, free, and pray because you're spending a lot of money. So you really need to figure out what makes sense on a strategic level based on what we're trying to achieve. So first of all, there's direct mail, which I've said a couple of times, so I'll explain what that is. Direct mail as opposed to, let's say, email or something virtual, it's physically sending something in the mail. So think about absolutely getting a gift to your office in front of you to send new software. So that's the, the option of direct mail. It's also used for postcards and flyers, and that's a great way to get in front of people at the face that they're, you know, that they're there. Uh, digital first, there's multi touch point campaigns. There's lots of campaigns like I showed you. So really there's a lot more that we could do with gifting rather than just think about what that gift is. I'll hop over to how to actually create the gifted campaign. So any ideas of the starting point of what you need to start thinking about a gifting campaign for whoever has thought about this? So like any other marketing uh, channel or campaign that you want to do, you're going to start with a brief and it'll include things about your audience, your goal, your budget, your messaging, and your timing. And this is going to teach you a lot about what you're going to build in the campaign. Because at the end of the day, the paradox of choice is just super difficult, right? Like we don't want to think like, hey, what's a pull gift? Now we want to understand, are we targeting C-levels? Are we targeting you know, directors, managers? What type of fields are they in? What interests them? What can I give them that's uh, going to be like cool for them specifically, but also portray the message that I'm trying to bring across as a company because I'm using this gift as marketing content at real estate, right? So if I know all of these things, it gives me good boundaries of what to do as a starting point and how to go about it. After I understand this, what I'll be able to, to do and attract. So either I as a marketer or I as a marketer that's working with a good gifting partner and we can discuss what that, what that means. Um, but what I'll be able to extract from that are the call to actions that I want to get from this campaign, the workflow that should be done and how do I build that into my overall marketing program and the get concepts itself. I love here are some successful gifting campaign tips. So just things that we see that time over time were helpful. Uh, probably not groundbreaking for whoever is doing marketing campaigns in other realms, but it is uh, sometimes difficult to understand how to pull that over to the world of gifting. 
So having that clear and clean contact list, who's my target ICP really focusing in and segmenting my audience, having one clear and clever message. So think about that right campaign or that send us campaign to hit your customer support targets or for heads the productivity is pretty sweet. What's that one message that I really want to drill into them to remember from this experience? Accordingly, the appropriate gift, a lot of the times if it's memorable and something that actually lasts and will remind them of that experience, you guys win, you know, exponentially because it's not only that time that we send them the gift, it's the fact that it sits on their desk and reminds them of Enbridge or, you know, Pout Flyer. Uh, it ties to the message. It doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel like a bribe. And again, what I say, memorable, it could also be in virtual experience, so we can go down that path. And uh, most importantly, it's about using this not as a one off tactic, but how to tie it back to your overall strategy. So, not just using it for sales and understanding the power of gifting and unlocking that as one of Benny Jet Flights. Um, I put my information here if you guys want the recipe or the word warner, you're welcome to reach out. And I know that EMD is going to share it afterwards. That's it. I'll pass it over to Ord, who's going to Steve dive into a very specific example that worked out really well with the Nominox flyer. 